Hello everyone, uh, Alvaro Perez here, back with another Adobe Illustrator tutorial. Uh, I wanted to thank everyone for the great response I got to that first video I posted to the group. Um, I was not expecting so many great comments and conversations to be started because of it, so thank you very much for that. Um, I wanted to show you this quick tutorial of uh, a tool that I stumbled upon yesterday that I was previously unaware of, and it's something that I think could be very useful for people designing interiors for KDP. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do is click on my uh, rectangle tool and I'm going to create a rectangle on my page. And remember while you're creating your rectangle, if you hold the space bar down, you can then move it around where you want it. I'm going to go about right there. Um, I don't have, it doesn't have the fill and stroke that I want. I want a black stroke and a white fill. And um, a cool trick or uh, shortcut is if you just click D, those are the default settings. So I now have a white fill and a black stroke. The stroke is only one point as you can see up here so I'm going to increase that to three so we can see it a little bit better. And there's our rectangle. So I'm going to reselect it and the tool I'm talking about is can be found under the object menu. So if I click on object, come down to path and then click split into grid. You'll get this window pop up and it's asking how many rows and how many columns I want in my grid. And for this example I want seven of each. So seven rows seven grids, and then it gives you a couple of other options to play with, right? You have the height of the rows, the width of the columns, and then you have the gutter. And that's pretty cool because if I go and actually right now I'm going to click on preview so we can see what we're working with. If I increase the gutter, you'll see what happens is it creates spaces between my columns and rows, right? So I'm going to put the gutter for the columns at 0.1 inch, and I'm going to put the gutter for the rows at I think 0.2, at least for this example. Then you have an option to increase or decrease the total height of your rows and the total width of your columns. So I think for my rows, I'm gonna go to, let's try 8.25. And then um, I like the columns the way they are. So um, the last thing for this example, for what I want to do, it's very important. You need to have add guides clicked uh, or checked or else this is not gonna work. So I click okay. And I'm going to click away and see what we're looking at here. So now I'm going to um, highlight everything again. So I drag the bounding box around my um, grid. And now we're going to work with a tool that I haven't talked about before. And it's called the Shape Builder tool. I have mine in my workspace over here. If you don't have yours on your screen, you can click on the three little uh, dots uh, under one of your toolbars. And you can find all your tools there. <clears throat> So what the Shape Builder tool allows you to do is it allows you to take um, any shapes that are next to each other and combine them together. And so with my, my boxes selected, I'm going to click on the Shape Builder tool, and I'm just going to click in the first box and drag. And you'll see it creates, it combines everything into one box. The only problem is, is that now my stroke and my fill went away. So I'm going to click away again. And this time I'm going to select my Direct Selection tool so that I can select only this one box, not all of them. And then I'm going to come up here to my um, stroke panel, and I'm going to increase the stroke weight back to three. And there we go. So um, you can see here that I think I had the stroke set on green. So I'm going to reselect it, and I'm going to change it. Oops, sorry. Change it back to black. And there you have it. Um, so now I'm going to come down to my type tool. I'm going to click here inside this box. And um, let's see what size we have it set at. Okay, it's at 58, and that's exactly what I want it to be. And so I'm going to type January. Sorry, I have to go back to my type tool. And now I'm going to drag it into place. I'm just kind of eyeballing it at this point. There are ways where you can align it perfectly, but I'm just going to sort of eyeball where I want this thing and then click away. Okay, next I want to fill these next seven boxes with the, the uh, first letter of uh, each day of the week. So I'm going to go back to my type tool, come into the first one here, and then under character, I'm going to drop this a little bit. I don't want it to be as big as the word January. So instead, I want that to be 48 points. Okay, and I'm just going to type an S. If I click on V, oh, whoops, hope that didn't work. I was trying to get back to my selection tool. Um, 
so let me drag that into place. All right, I'm going to try something here. I hope it works. Um, so I'm going to take my direct selection tool and I'm going to open up the info panel. So the info panel is going to be give me information about the distance between different elements in my document. So if I click on the direct selection tool and look at the numbers on my info palette, if I click on that edge right there, that first edge of my box, hold shift, and I'm going to click on the edge of the second box as well. And that's going to give me the distance between the two. And the distance here is 0.9987. Okay, that's the distance between those two lines. So I'm going to remember that number, 0.9987. Okay, so now I'm going to select my text. I'm going to go to my transform palette. And I'm going to add that number, 0.9987. Hit enter, and it moved. Okay, now I forgot to do something. Control C is to copy. Control Shift V to paste in place. And then now I'll hit Control D and it redoes that transform. Um, and so I'm going to do the same thing all over again. Control C to copy. Control Shift V to paste in place. Control D. Control C. Control Shift V. Control D. Control C. Control Shift V. Control D. Over and over again. Control C. Control Shift V. Control D. And one more time. Control C. Control Shift V. Control D. Um, so now I can uh, go back to each of these, and then with my text tool or type tool, I'm going to change them into the correct letter. <clears throat> uh, the whole purpose of that was to get everything spaced evenly uh, and centered in the boxes. So here I'll go ahead and um, put an M. Now some of the letters are wider, so we're going to have to go back and fix that. So I will just slide that back into place because it's wider than the S. Go back to my type tool. Delete, and a T. Delete, and a W. And there's another one we're going to have to slide back. Back to my type tool. And a T. And F for Friday. Of course, we can fine tune this all we need to if they don't look centered to you, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it uh, the way it is right now. <clears throat> okay, so there we have our days of the week. Next thing I want to do is I want to insert some numbers here um, for the days of the month. And so I'm going to go back to my type tool. I'm going to click somewhere in the first box here, and I'm going to put 01. Of course, I'm not playing around with fonts at all. Um, you guys can, of course, em embellish your pages with fancy fonts or whatever it is you want to do. Um, so this is obviously too big, so let me, that happens a lot, got to be careful here. Okay, I'm going to go back to my character panel, and I'm going to drop that to, I think, 16. 16 points. That looks pretty good to me, and it's almost in place. I like where it is. Okay. So now I'm going to try and copy that again across all of these boxes, just like I did with the days of the week. So it's already selected. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that same number, that same distance between this line and this line. I'm going to add it when I, tr when I transform this so that I can distribute it evenly across all of these boxes. Um, so I'm going to, first of all, hit Control-C to copy it, Control-Shift-V to paste it in place. So now there's two of them there. Now when I click on X, I'm going to add plus 0.9987, same number we used before hit enter and you'll see that copy got moved. Um, and so now I'm going to again hit control C, control shift V, and then control D to move it. Control C, control shift V, and control D. I'm going to do that over and over again to fill these boxes. And there we go. So select that corner and that corner. It says 1.2 Zero seven one. So that's how much I want to increase it. One point two zero seven one. So I'm going to go back and select all of these again. Control C to copy it. 
Control Shift V to paste it in place. Go to Transform and to Y I'm going to add plus 1.2071. You'll see it got pasted in the row beneath. So again, Control C, Control Shift V, Control D. And there we have it. One thing I am going to do is show you how to gray out some of these numbers. So let's say January just happened to start on a Wednesday and you want to gray out those first three numbers. Let's do that. So I'm actually going to go into the type tool and then I'm going to reselect my type. And then I can come up here and change the value um, of the color. And so there you have it's grayed out. So I'm going to do that again. Let's, let's just say for the first three days. And I think that was the one I did, I'm not sure. And then finally for the third day here. There you go. And actually now that we've done that, we should probably gray out the last day of the month here because that would also be the 31st, I believe, would fall here on a Friday. And so I'm gonna grab my text or my type tool again, highlight the last zero one that we have here, change that color as well. Okay, so there you have it. Um, I think one last thing I'll do here is I'm going to highlight everything. <clears throat> Let me zoom out a bit. And I'm going to shrink this down just a bit. So let's just zoom out a little further. Shift and Alt, remember to uh, shrink from the center. Make that a little bit smaller. Okay, and I think I'll shift it down a bit as well. Control plus to zoom back in a bit. Okay, now I think I'm gonna add a couple of embellishments like I did in the last video. Uh, this time I'm not gonna use bugs because some of y'all didn't like my bugs last time. So uh, I've got a couple of um, flowers picked out that I did create in Adobe Illustrator.